We got a new addition to the shop here. I made an air receiving system on the cheap. I got both these tanks dirt cheap and I put them together to add some capacity to my air system. And I'll show a couple clips now of uh, what the tanks look like when I got them and cleaning them out. This one I got for 50 bucks, I just gotta clean it up. Here's tank number two as I got it. This is a 120 gallon tank. Gotta clean her up a little bit. This one's a little heavier than the 80, so this one's probably gonna go on the bottom. So flushing out these uh, tanks, and looks like a lot of rust we're getting out of it, but it's a, a thick wall tank, so it should be okay. We're actually pumping out the uh, the water and rust mix out this hole on the bottom. It's working pretty good. She fills up pretty quick. There's like a little quarter inch hole in the bottom. There's no way you'd get that stuff out of there. Here's a look at the uh, rust bath. Still quite a few particles in there. Okay. This is after about a dozen scrapes and flushes. There's a ton of crap in this tank too. and It's a little harder to clean out because the big hole's in the bottom and there's a little dinky hole on top. Basically, I bought this compressor and it's 100% duty cycle, which means it can run 10 minutes out of 10 minutes. And it fills up that little 60 gallon tank beneath it in just a matter of a couple minutes. And then it has to run unloaded for six minutes to cool the motor off. And it can cycle up to 10 times per hour. If your compressor was not 100% duty cycle, I definitely would not recommend trying to do something like this. You could easily overwork your compressor. I added this because I want to minimize how many times that motor starts up. Every time the motor starts up, there's an inrush of current, and it heats it up. And ultimately, this would be my wet tank. A lot of the water condenses out of that compressed air, drops to the bottom of this tank. And when I can get a deal on the dryer, this tank, that yellow hose back there, will be plumbed to a dryer, and then out of the dryer will go to these two tanks, which will be my dry tanks. You can see these two receiving tanks are plumbed to the feed side of the pressure regulator. I had to do that because I want maximum pressure in the receiving tanks. The bottom one is 120 gallon and the top one is 80 gallon. So I've added 200 gallons of receiving capacity. I just simply bolted this top compressor on this bottom one. It was already on this angle iron and it went in far enough to uh, catch the top plate. Both of these tanks have a working pressure of 200 psi on like a thinner wall cheapo tank. It kind of dawned on me after building this that I could have mounted these tanks upside down and they probably would have lasted twice as long. But I'm sure they still got some pretty good life in them and for what I paid I'm not really too worried about it. I wanted to get a single 240 or 50 gallon tank but they're like 700 bucks new. And I found on eBay and on Craigslist, people are trying to sell them for more than what they cost new. So hopefully this added capacity helps minimize the amount of times that uh, my poor motor has to start up to keep the system at pressure. That there is a screw compressor and it shuts off at 140 PSI and then uh, runs unloaded for that six minutes to cool it down. I built a manifold system connecting the two tanks and added valves so I can isolate everything. Plenty of unions to make it easy to work on. And that's the thick wall copper tubing. In one of my cheap phases I added that Schedule 40 PVC and it's rated to 480 PSI but it's definitely not something I would recommend anybody do. I could just picture that turning into a shrapnel grenade one day. I actually got this whole thing together without any leaks except for one right at this uh, drain valve. Cranked the heck out of it and it's still leaking. After flushing both of these tanks they both drain perfectly fine. Added a couple gauges on each tank and uh, pressure relief valves. There's my air system as it stands now and 
if I can get my hands on a dryer for cheap of some sort, there's a couple different types. There's like a desiccant type, and then there's a coil type. And if I get my hands on one of them, I'll, uh, I'll add another video to my air system. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.